Um, source and destination signal arrows. I'm going to do a couple of different things in this webinar. I'm going to, for those that might be new to the software, show you how the source destination signal symbols work in general. Then I'm also going to get into creating your own custom source and destination symbols. We get requests for that quite often. So I'm gonna show you a best practice on how to create your own custom source and destination signal arrows and well and how to store them. And then I'm gonna get into fan in source, fan out destination as well. And I refer to that as, which will make more sense once we get there, trying to combine a little bit of the electrical world with the graphics world in representing a cable or really any harness for that matter. So to get right at it, as you can see, I'm just in a drawing where I've got a couple of hot wires, a couple of neutral wires, and the whole premise behind your source and destination arrows is the ability to be able to break a wire and pick it back up somewhere else. And it could be in the same drawing, it could be in two different drawings. And these are symbols, but they're also part of a utility. It's not like your, you know, your basic symbol when you go to the icon menu and insert a push button or a selector switch or a limit switch. These are symbols, they are AutoCAD blocks with attributes just like those, but it's also part of a utility. And that's gonna make more sense when I go to create my own custom source and or destination symbol, symbols, if you will. So I'm gonna start by, you know, let's say this was a standard 120 distribution drawing. I ran out of space and I need to carry this wire right here over to here. So it needs to know that it's the same wire, it's the same potential could do the same with the neutral wires. And that's where the source and destination come into play. So I'm gonna pick the source arrow to start with, and I'm gonna pick on the end of my wire where I want the symbol to go. And the key to your source and destination signal symbols is the code, kind of like the tag in a normal symbol. You don't have a tag in source destination. You don't have a tag attribute. So right off the bat, you can see that it's a little bit different than your normal symbols. But the tag is kind of replaced with a code. So for the code, you can name the code anything you'd like. Doesn't matter. The only thing we, you know, you don't want to use the special characters, but I can use spaces, I can use dashes, I can use underscores for the code itself. So for this code right here, I'm going to call it test dash 10, whatever. You can put in descriptions about the wire about the signal symbol itself, you can kind of use the description attribute field for anything you want. I'll call this hot. And then over here, and keep this in mind when I go to show you how to create your own custom signal symbols. We have a choice out of, a, out of the box where you can have, you know, the basic arrow symbol, pretty big in North America. We can also have an arrow pointing at a rectangle. We have the hex symbol. We have the tilde, which is big in Europe. You can use any of these as far as the signal arrow style is concerned. I'm gonna go back to the first one and I'm gonna select okay. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna insert the destination now. Now I'm gonna say okay, because it's gonna be in the same drawing. But if it was in a different drawing, I would just pick no. 
and then go to my source or my destination arrow command and give it the same code as the source. That's what does all the linking together. So if I pick OK here, and I zoom and or pan up to here, and I put the destination on the top half of this, as you can see, it immediately cross-references back to the source. My wire number is 12,000 here, and it's telling me it's coming from reference number 1236. It includes the description I put in there. Didn't have to put the description in. And if I go back down here, you can see, you know, it's telling me where it's going to. So it knows right now that, you know, this wire right here and this one right here are one and the same. And as I said, since I did it in the same drawing, I didn't actually insert the symbol, but if I did, I would have filled in the same exact code as I did the source. That's the key. To tie the two together, give your destination code the same as whatever you gave the source. And that's what ties them together. And that's how, you know, basically the source and destination signal arrows work in general. You want to break a wire and then you want to pick it back up somewhere else. Now, some requests that we get or often get is people want to make their own signal symbols, which is fine. Totally agree with it. It might be a case of, you know, they want to change the graphics. In this case, maybe they want to make the arrow bigger. You want to change the text justification of the wire number, or you want to move the description attribute, whatever the case is, people like to make their own. Now, best practice wise is to take an existing one, copy it to your own custom folder, modify it in your own custom folder, and that way you can continue to use the command as is, but it's just gonna replace the symbol out of the box with your symbol. And like I said, these symbols are not your standard push button, proc switch, whatever. They have a utility that's part of the symbol itself doing the linking. So what I'm gonna do right now, and just as a precursor, I'm gonna take a look at my project properties. And in my project properties, I have some standard libraries from when I installed the software. A lot of times they'll go to NFPA. This one happens to be the JIC 125. They're basically the same. But here's my own custom symbol library. And this is best practice in general. All your projects, the very first library in the paths should be your own custom one. This is, sit, this is looking local to take it a step further your own custom symbol library should be in a shared network folder. And one of the main reasons why we set it up as the first one in the path is the specific purpose of, you know, there might be not just a source or destination symbol in the library that comes out of the box, but it could be any symbol that you, you know, you like it, you use it, but there's something that you want to modify about it. So the easiest way is to copy that symbol into your own custom folder. And that way, when you go to insert it, whether it's a source or destination or a push button, whatever, it looks in your library first. So if you have the same named symbol, it's going to look in your library for the symbol first. It doesn't find it there then it will go to the one that was installed out of the box so having said that i'm going to right block both the source and destination symbol out to a library just the standard autocad right block command and under source i'm going to select block 
and I'll choose, here's the source one. And I'm gonna save it in this particular folder that I created just for this web app. I'm gonna call this my custom library folder where any symbol that I create goes into this folder. And I'm gonna leave it the same name, keep that in mind. So I'm gonna pick okay here. And then I'm gonna write the destination out. Just again, the AutoCAD standard right block command. And I'm gonna save it in the same folder. Now I'm gonna to go to the standard AutoCAD open drawing command. And I'm gonna open those blocks up that I just created. It's defaulting to my custom library folder, let's say my make-believe one. And I'm gonna open this up just like you would any other drawing. Again, it's still an AutoCAD block with attributes. So when you do this, you can take any of the source destination symbols, whether it was the arrow, the tilde, the hex, whatever, save them to your own custom folder, then open the block up as a normal drawing. From here, do whatever you want to it. Meaning, you know, do you want to change? Let me change my uh, nap settings here real quick because that is very large. So it might be a case where, you know, I can go to my properties, let's say. Maybe change the justification, even the height, the width factor is already smaller than one. You can make it smaller or bigger. You could take a piece of text and move it. You know, here's the description text. Here's the cross reference where it, you know, looks at the destination. Here's where the wire number shows up. And sometimes I get, you know, people asking me, well, you know, I don't need the wire number to show up. It's already on the wire getting carried over to the next drawing, it's gonna be on that wire. That's fine too. Just like any other attribute in a symbol, I could make that invisible if I want. So change the graphics, change the text, modify you know, the text attributes, do whatever you want, make it your own custom symbol. Now in this case, just to save some time, all I'm gonna do is put a solid in the arrow. So the regular AutoCAD solid command. And I'll say, let's go from the intersection here to the intersection here to the intersection here. So I changed something, just so you can see that I changed something. And then I'll do a zoom extents again. I could have changed a lot more. And then I'm just going to save and close this particular symbol down. Keep in mind the whole time, it's the same symbol name as what came out of the library, what came out of the box. Now I'm gonna open up the destination, and you can do the same thing. For the destination symbol, change the graphics, make the attributes invisible, change their justifications, change their height, change their position, do whatever you wanna do with it. And once again, just to make a change, so you can see that it is gonna use this one, I'm just gonna put a solid inside of the arrow. Um, 
the intersection here to the intersection here to the intersection here. So I've got my own custom source arrow signal symbol. I've got a source and a destination. So again, I'm just going to save and close this down. And now if I go to, let's say, my next drawing. Let me, I did that already. Yes, make these two wires a little bit smaller. So now I'm going to go back to the source arrow command. I'm going to pick the end of the wire, just like I did in the other drawing. I'll punch in a code. I'll even use the next one here. Doesn't really matter. I can put in another description. And I'm using the same arrow symbol. And I'll say, okay, and I'll pick the destination as well. And I neglected to put a wire number on here. Let's do that real quick. So now you can see it's using my own custom symbol. That's with the solid. That's the only thing I changed, but it's the same name symbol, which is important here. People feel funny about that sometimes. Well, I don't, I, don't, I shouldn't have, you know, the, the, the same symbol shown two different ways. It, 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 it is okay that you do that. And the reason why we do it in this situation, you know, if, if this was something like a, a, a push button, let's say, well, sure, I could create my own custom one and I give it my own, you know, custom name after the underscore like we do with the symbol naming convention. When you have a symbol like this, it's still a symbol, but it's a utility. So AutoCAD Electrical, it's not looking for a unique symbol name. It wants to see the same name. And that's why when I go back to my project properties, That's why it's so important that your own custom library folder is listed first. Because when I went to insert the source and or the destination, it's gonna look, you know, it's looking for the symbol name that I wanna insert, but it's gonna look in this folder first. If it didn't find it there, then it would go here, 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 so on and so forth. So that's why Again, best practice wise, when you want to create your own custom source and destination symbol signals, blocks, whatever we want to call them, keep them the same name. Just put them in your own custom folder. And then when the next release of the software comes out, AutoCAD Electrical is not going to change that symbol name. It's been around since, you know, the software came out over 15 years ago. That way, whatever comes in a new library, you don't have to touch. Your custom source and destination signal symbols are still in your own custom library folder that you're going to use release after release after release. So that's how you can create your own custom source and destination signal symbols. Just take one of them that comes out of the box, put it in your own custom library, the whole key, leave it the same name.
Now I'm going to go to the next drawing in the project. And now I'm going to change it up with a fan in source fan out destination. And I kind of call this a little bit of a hidden gem. Uh, people shy away from it for whatever reason. It's still part of the same source and destination family. Its purpose is the same. Its purpose is to break a wire and pick it back up somewhere else. But where this is different than your regular source and destination is that we can show graphics in between the source and destination itself, fan in source, fan out destination. And usually we use this for cables or some type of harness because we want to show we want to show a little bit of the graphics of the cable typically with AutoCAD or AutoCAD electrical you know especially AutoCAD electrical it can be difficult to do from a 2D perspective now if we go over to inventor we can route those and cables and harnesses and show them all, all day long but this could be an alternative to that as well so what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert, to start with, a connector symbol. And I'm just going to make it a five pin count connector symbol, spacing one, pinless starting at one. I use the fixed spacing. I'm going to flip it to begin with, and I'm going to insert this kind of just randomly, let's say, right at 1405 here. And this is your standard connector dialog box. I could add a part number, descriptions. I will put a location code on here. I'll call it MCAB5. And then I'll pick OK. And then I'm going to use the multiple bus command. And this could be, and I'll repeat this in a few minutes. I just happened to insert a connector symbol because it has five. I could dictate, you know, I wanted five connection points. But this could be any symbol. It could be a drive symbol, an HMI symbol. I'm just showing some wires coming off of one symbol and going to another is what's going to happen at the end of the day here. So I'm going to go to my multiple bus command. And I'm going to start it at a component with multiple wires. And then I'm going to wrap a window around my connection points and just draw some wires. I'm going to you know, put it, let's say, randomly out to about here, giving myself a lot of space. Now, Right now, as a mental note, these wires that I just placed down are on this generic wires layer. If I go to my create edit wire type dialog box, I've got a heck of a lot more in here. That just happened to default to the generic wires layer. I'm going to leave it at that right now. And then I'm going to insert a cable. And I'll drop this down, let's say, right about here. And I'm giving myself a lot of space here, as you're going to see in a minute. And I'll put a catalog number on here. I'm just going to pick a five conductor annexer cable. And that way it fills in the wire color ID for me. And I'll give this a location of MCAB as well. And I'll select OK. And then I'll go and insert the rest of the child symbols. And again, 
color code is being dictated by the catalog number itself. We'll put one down on each one, each wire. And then I'm gonna hit escape. And now my intention is to take these wires to another symbol that I'm gonna drop down in a few minutes, in a couple of minutes here. So I'm gonna to go to the fan in source command. And I'm gonna choose the solid wire number description. And you kind of look at your wiring scenario as far as which wire connection orientation you're going to use here. So I'm coming off the right side of this symbol. Again, it could be any symbol, not just a connector. So this is the orientation that I want to choose. And I'll drop it down, let's say right about here. And again, just like the regular source and destination, you start with a code. And I'm going to call this oh, 14, oh, 05 dash 01. So basically, I'm grabbing the cable number itself without the CBL. I'm going to make it easier. I can even put the CBL in here. It's just a code. That's all it is that I need to link to a destination. In the description, let's let's say it's you know it's a robot cable, whatever. And I'll pick OK. And then I'll do a source fence insert. And I'll do the rest of them. Next one down is gonna be the same, except it's gonna have a dash zero two. So now the code is different than the first wire as it should be. Next one, I'm just gonna let it default to 03, 04, and 05, just the code. That's all it is for each one of those. Now what happens when you place the fan in source down on a wire, and remember the orientation that I used. On the left side of the symbol itself, that's still a real wire. On the right side, it places it on this layer called multi-wire, which makes it a dumb line at this point, it's graphics. It's not a real wire right here. So now let's say, I'll come down here. I'll insert another connector. And again, this could be any symbol, not just a connector symbol. And let me just line it up with A reference number, then I'll move it. We'll give this the location code of machine in this case. I'm going to pick OK here. And then I'm just going to move it out here to the right. Just eyeball in, if you will. And now I'm gonna do something real similar as I did with the source. I'm gonna start with my wires with the multiple bus command. And we'll just draw these, let's say out to here.
Now I'm going to go fan out destination. And this time the wire connection orientation accordingly to the symbol where I'm going would be this one. So I'll drop this one down directly onto the wire. Let's say right about here. And then I'm going to go to the drawing button to pick the code. This is very best practice, if you will, here. You're a lot better off, and this holds true for source, regular source and destination. You're always better off picking the destination from a list because if you make a typo, it simply won't work. If you make a typo, the code is different from the source. They're not going to be linked together. It's not going to know that it's the same wire. So I'll pick OK here on this one. And then I'll just keep dropping these down. Go to my drawing. This would be O2. Next one. O3. Next one. O4. And then the next one. O5. So now, at this point, on the left side of the symbol, the destination, this is a dumb drawing line. It's not a wire. On the right side, it is a real wire. And even before I go any further and tie these together with some graphics, if I go to my reports and I go to cable from two for the active drawing, do all locations. It already works perfect from a source destination standpoint. Now these got out of order for some reason, that's an easy fix, but you can see that cable 1405 flat coming from pin one of this connector going to pin one of this connector. Same thing with the rest of them. So if I didn't do anything else and I ran a report on this, it already works perfect as far as the source destination is con concerned. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more with the graphics. And this is where the whole intention here is to represent a cable graphically. And anybody who's used AutoCAD Electrical out there knows that this can be difficult because it does in, in a good way. You know, a wire is a wire. It's a single wire that has to go from, you know, a connection point to another connection point, no matter what they are. Now, having said that, I can create any graphics I want at this point to represent a cable meaning I go to my home tab and use my AutoCAD tools, which is pretty rare unless you're in symbol build mode for AutoCAD Electrical. So I'm going to go to my regular AutoCAD line command. Right now, my current layer is set to zero. And I'm going to draw a line from the endpoint here. And then I'll just randomly <clears throat> Brought, let's say, down to here, and then over to here, and 
and then down to here. So what this is currently supposed to represent is, you know, I've got five conductors that are going into a cable. So this would be one end of the cable. And then this would be the other end of the cable where the conductors come out of and goes to this symbol. And this is where you can make the graphics a lot better than just showing a single line like that as far as representing the conductors that come out of one end of the cable and the other end of the cable. So right now, just as an example, since I'm not a good arc creator, I'm going to use the fillet command, then the extend command. There's a million ways you could do this inside of AutoCAD. And then I'm just going to extend it back up to here. And then I'll do another fillet. Let's say between here, always forget the multiple, here. And then I'll do the same thing as I did before up top. And like I said, there's a million ways you could do this same task with AutoCAD. So whatever you're comfortable with. So it's starting to look a little bit better at this point. Now I'm going to take and make this a polyline to show it as a little bit thicker. So now I'm just going to go to my edit polyline command. And I'll choose a line here and say, yes, turn it into one. And then I want to join. And I'll join the rest of this. And then I'll pick enter. And then I'm going to make it a little bit thicker of a line weight. So now it's really starting to look like a real cable. Like I've got, you know, and I could have included, you know, at least this arc or made these separate polylines if you wanted those to be thicker as well, as far as the arcs are concerned. You could have done that. Use your imagination. This is, you know, it's all graphics. And that's the whole point is you've got source, you've got destination fan in source, fan, fan out destination, but ultimately it's source destination. When I go to my wire number command right now, you know, it knows here's wire 1405. Here's wire 1405, 1407, 1407 so on and so forth. So when you think about it from that standpoint, it's source destination. You're breaking a wire, you're picking it back up somewhere else. But what's different with the fan in, fan out is the graphics that you show in between. Now somebody can you know, get a visualization that, oh yeah, that is actually a cable. And here is your cable identifier right here. And the mistake people make is they think they have to repeat the cable symbol down here. Remember, you don't need to do that because it's, you know, the cable symbol itself is already attached to one conductor. 
well, this conductor is this conductor. So you don't need to insert another cable symbol down on the destination. When I go back to reports, once again, it still sees the cable, you know, coming from PJ1405 pin one, location code MCAB, and it still sees it going to the PJ, in this case, 1425, which is down here, in the component, in the pin number, where it's going to. So it sees it all the way through. You don't need to insert another cable symbol. That's where people, they, they want to do that. They try to do that. They think they have to do that. No, not the case at all. Now, the other thing I was going to mention before we leave here is some, I've got these, and people treat their cables differently. And there's no right or wrong in this situation in the sense that all of these wires right here are on this generic wires layer. So this might be an example of who's ever you know, using that report is only using it from a cable standpoint. They don't care what the wire number or color or gauge is, number they do, the color or gauge, they don't care what it is because they're not gonna use that. But some people like to match it up. So as an example, I could go to my change convert wire type and pick um let's say 14 black because this is a black wire on the cable and then we could do the same with the red let's say it's a 14 red And then I've got a 14 blue, or whatever this gauge might be. <clears throat> and then we've got a orange. This is 16, but I'll assign it anyway. And then one more with the yellow. And that's okay. Some people like to match the actual wire in the drawing to whatever the size in the conductor is going to be in the cable. So now, if you ran a report on this, and I could do the other end as well, I won't just to save some time here. No, I guess I can. I'm going to take two minutes here. I'll do the same thing on the other end. This is going to be a 14 black. And then we've got a red. I think it was a red. Just check it again. Black, red, blue, orange, yellow. Black, red, blue, orange, and the reason why somebody might do this is because when they do run the, I'm gonna run the same cable report.
and maybe somebody might want to add the wire color and gauge on here for both of these. So now you can see the actual size and color of the conductor here. And again, some people don't show that. They don't care. As long as the color code is correct on their cable itself, that's what they're mainly concerned with. But other users like to set it up like this, and that's perfectly fine as well. So the whole point you know, here, once again, as far as the fan in, out, fan in source, fan out destination, you're still bringing a wire, you're picking it back up somewhere else, you're just showing some graphics in between. And it usually obviously is for a cable setup is where you would use these tools. So the biggest takeaways from today, source destination, creating your own custom symbols. Remember, put them in your own custom library and make sure that that library it should be anyway whether we're talking source test whether we're talking anything your own custom library folder should be the first one in the path or the first one on the list i should say of the paths so copy the existing symbol out of the box to your own custom folder leave it the same name make the modifications you want to make now you got your own custom source destination symbol. And then again, if you've never used the fan in out source destination, maybe this will change your mind. I like this tool. I like to be able to show a little bit of the graphical world with the electrical world. Okay. Guess nice we'll job, see. Greg. This is Julia. We have we do have a couple questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the first one comes from Stefan, and it's for Vault users. Where would you suggest that we save custom library folders for company wide use? Um, I can take this one actually. So Vault and AutoCAD Electrical work very very differently than Vault and Inventor, so to speak. Um, AutoCAD Electrical, we recommend uh, setting up a network share that everybody can gain access to and then setting the environment file to that. We do, however, have customers that vault all of their shared library data, all their templates, everything for backup purposes. Um, and then there, and you can automate with some tools with vault to actually have it um, automatically sync uh, whatever is in the vault down to either your local workspace or to a shared workspace out in the network. Um, but unlike things like Content Center, Vault and Electrical do work a little differently. Um, let's see, next, and I think you just showed this. Can you show the cable core color on the other side of the cable as well, even if it's on another sheet? Well, that's, that's it's a great question. Um, but unfortunately, because the best part of the question is, yes, graphically, you could show half the graphics here, half on the other side, let's say. We could, but it works just like any other cable symbol. You can't show it on both ends. This is no different, unfortunately, even though I agree with Tron, he'd like to see, you know, see yeah. it on both ends if it is in another drawing. So my answer to that would be use your wire sizes, colors, and gauges like I did down here after I changed them. So at the very least, you know, somebody can look at the source on the other drawing and they look at the destination. It's like, okay, there's my, at least at the very least, colors of the conductor of the cable that it takes up. But unfortunately, we can't repaint that. And I, I agree. I wish we could just show a repeat of the tag itself, whatever, but we can't do that, unfortunately. Yeah, 
Okay, David has a question. He just wants to verify that the gauge and color are not passed through the source and destination. Right, that's why I had to do it down here as yep, well. Yep, the way you did it, yep. Right, you just gotta show it the same on each end. I wish they would automatically just switch, but unfortunately they don't. It'd be something great to uh, go up and request up on Autodesk's uh, Knowledge Network is where you can go request um, various additions and changes um, to the code and Autodesk does try to at least gather the top 10 that people vote on in order to get it into the next version. So they listen to you guys more than they necessarily listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they do. But no, very good questions. And they are good suggestions, like Julie said, for Autodesk. I'd love to see them implemented, both of them. That's all we have on this side. Ashley? Okay, well, thanks for the presentation and thank you all for attending today. Um, this will conclude the broadcast, but if you think of additional questions later on, you can simply re uh, reply to that confirmation or reminder email you received from GoToWebinar and we can get those to Greg or your um, sales rep to get the questions answered. Uh, once again, a short survey will pop up as we close down and we thank you for filling that out. Also look out for that email tomorrow, which will contain a link for the recording of the presentation. And we'll go ahead and close things down for today, but have a great day, everyone. Thank you.